that would be, please contact Ocala Aviation Services, 861-7484. All right, 21 minutes after 9 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Nice looking uh, Wednesday morning. First day of November. Wow. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, on the phone, uh, Denise Rohan is on the phone. Denise served in the United States Army and is the national commander of the American Legion. And they do some really good work in our community. And she's talking to us today about a, a program called the Family First Program. Uh, good morning, Denise. Thank you for being on the show with us today. Good mer- Good morning. How it's are great you? to be with you. What's wh- where I are am, you? Where are you? Call- I am good. <laughs> where are you calling from? I am actually. I'm in our national headquarters in Indianapolis, Indiana, today. Oh my gosh! How is it up there? What's the weather like? Uh, kind of cold and rainy, <laughs> uh, but it's exciting. It's exciting to be here because right now our um, we're having American Legion College where we have. Um, Legionnaires from across the nation come into our national headquarters, and we learn. We're teaching about leadership and about the organization, so that they can go home and keep our posts open and keep them going. And 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 how how is that? Is that a national program? It well for the American Legion members. Uh, what happens is across the nation, the the our our state headquarters and leadership in in every state. Um, looks at the up-and-comers of the organization and they say, you know, we want to send this person to our headquarters to learn more about leadership and and learn as much as they possibly can about the American Legion and come home. Uh, The time that they spend here, they get to talk to each other and learn about what's going on in other states and they get to take home their fresh ideas and um, hit the ground running. Uh, You are the first woman to be elected to the uh, top position of the nation's largest veterans organization, so congratulations on that. Thank you for your service to us all. Also, by the way, with uh, your work in the Army. Um, so uh, let me ask you about leadership. Obviously, you've got it nailed. You know how to be a leader. Wh- what, do you, what do you attribute that to? Do you think it was a learned skill? I, I Well, it's a little bit of everything. Um, when I was growing up as a child, my mom and dad said, you know, if you work hard and, and, and you pay attention and you can be anything you want to be, which is also happens to be the Army theme, not why I joined uh-huh. the Army. But um, So it is a matter of working hard, paying attention, and, and my it's hard to think of me as, as a great leader uh, just for personal purposes, but um, I just look at, at people and see what they do and, and just try to encourage them to keep moving forward. And so I'm, I guess I'm a leader who leads from behind to make sure that the people are doing what they need to do and or they're happy while I, they're doing it. I, I wonder if, as, as a woman, do you see it as um, an opportunity, finally, for women to, to be in leadership positions? I don't know what we can blame it on, that, that we didn't have more women in leadership positions before, uh, I guess if we start that conversation, it becomes political. But in spite of that, do you think it's getting better, the whole climate for women? I do believe it's better. The, the American Legion, we were founded almost 100 years ago. Back in 1919, when we were founded, women could vote for a national commander before they could vote for president of the United States. So I, I've always looked at the American Legion as a forward-thinking organization, and I know that women have been in leadership position in this organization ever since the beginning of time. Um, they're either leading as commanders of their post or their, their districts or their states. Uh, and I just think it's just a matter of back in the 1950s, uh, women were part of the organization, but they weren't just the, the, the times, the way it is, that yeah. women were, were at home taking care of their families. And, and as things change and women are more in the workplace and they're out more, um, I, I am just so honored to be the national commander of the American Legion. Uh, nice. We, I just happened to... You, you, yep, go ahead. You, I think you would get along with this, the people in this community. We have a very strong veterans community, uh, very friendly veterans community, and the American Legion here is a big part of that. Um, and, and I know that in addition, I mean, the, the things they do, it's, it's like service is in their blood. And it sounds like it is in yours, too. It sounds like you guys really stepped up to the plate with Hurricane Harvey, with Hurricane Irma. 
Tell me about some of the things you do that the average person doesn't realize the American Legion does. Well, exactly. I have a theme of family first, and that is all about taking care of one another. Now, you can find out all kinds of information about the Legion on legion.org, which is our website. But as the hurricanes were hitting Texas and then later into Florida, the American Legion families, uh, American Legion, the state headquarters from across the nation were putting loading up semis to take to Texas. They loaded up semis to take into Florida. Um, we have funds that are going to uh, Puerto Rico also. Also, is they're recovering from their hurricanes, uh, and also into Mexico from from the earthquake that took place there. Uh, the American Legion family is just stepping up, taking care of one another, uh, taking care of communities, not just Legion members. Uh -huh. uh, but we also have national emergency funds, uh, which 100% of donations that go into our national emergency funds go back out into the communities um, to take care of of any natural disaster that happened to be happening. Um, the wildfire is taking taking place out in Montana and California. Right, right. Um, the, the American Legion family is just continues to be there to, to help out whenever we're needed. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, and do you do you also help out with the uh, the veterans who may not necessarily be aware that a, a, a change in the law uh, might affect either their benefits or something else about uh, about that would affect them specifically as being a veteran? Uh, well, with the American Legions across the, across the United States, we have officers that are called service officers, and our service officers are in place to help veterans um, apply for and get the benefits that they earned and deserved uh, during their military service. Uh, the American Legion is all about taking care of veterans and their families. Um, we were uh, really excited during our convention in Reno, Nevada. Uh, President Trump signed a bill on our stage during convention, and that was the Appeals Modernization Act. And part of that act is all about making sure that if a veteran has filed a claim for benefits that they, they deserve, that those claims get get processed a little bit quicker. And if there's appeals that need to be done, it it, it helps with that process of getting things taken yeah, care of my so that they get my, what they deserve. My notes indicate that you've uh, been very busy in Wisconsin as well. Robin is from Wisconsin. Robin is a Go Packers. Yeah, Robin's ah. a Wisconsin girl. That's right. Go Packers. Yeah. <laughs> Are you heading That's to it. Asia? Are you going to the to Asia, to China, something like that? We we are. We're headed for uh, South Korea at the end of November. Okay, okay. Oh, my gosh, it's November already. Uh, so we're going into South Korea uh, to visit with our military personnel that are stationed over there, but we also have American Legion posts that are over in Korea also. So we're, we're going over to, to visit with both our currently serving military and the veterans who are there as part of our American Legion. We also are going to hit Okinawa, and we're going to hit the Philippines as well before heading over to Hawaii for the remembrance of Pearl Harbor. Well, I, I really uh, so want to extend to you our thanks. Uh, you are probably humble with these kinds of words, but I really, truly think that my freedom to be able to speak on the radio is only because of you and other veterans who made the decision to do what you've done. So thank you for that. And thank you for stepping up to the plate and being a leader in a great organization uh, and also for coming on the radio with us today. Well, thanks, and thanks for having us to help bring awareness to the American Legion family. And I'm going to do one more plug, legion.org. You can learn more and uh, just have fun learning yeah. about the American Legion and come into our communities, come into our posts. Absolutely. And the website, again, legion.org. Uh, Denise H. Rohan, again, thank you for being on the show with us today. It was fun. Thank you, Larry and Robin. Bye-bye. You're welcome. All right, we will take a little break, and we will be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. See, boating is no accident. A nice day on this Wednesday with clouds and sunshine. High 77 to 81. The partly cloudy skies Wednesday night with lows ranging from the mid to upper 50s in the coolest inland spots to about 67 along the coast. Thursday will be a nice day with a mix of sun and clouds. High 78 to 82. And on Friday, partly sunny. High 79 to 83. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Be sure to tune in to hear about innovative financial strategies on the long-running program Prosper with Keith Singer. You will learn about intelligent ways to safely grow and preserve your wealth, create reliable income streams, and maximize your legacy. Tune in Saturday at 8.05 a.m. and again on Sunday at 10.05 a.m. Prosper with Keith Singer.
the City of Ocala Department of Recreation and Parks are proud to present the 34th Annual Light Up Ocala on November 18th. The fun starts on the square in downtown Ocala from 4 to 9 p.m. There'll be food vendors, four stages of entertainment, Whoville, Theme Kids Zone, the downtown holiday skating ring, crafts, the Junior Sunshine Christmas Parade around the square, and at about 7.30 p.m., the official downtown lighting ceremony. See you at Light Up Ocala. The City of Ocala Department of Recreation and Parks are proud. Hey, Matt, I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we, we do that. I need too. my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that too. I need a new roof line, a new spoiler, and a new Yep, truck. we can even do that too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show too, huh? Well, as a matter of fact, join me every Monday at 10 for auto repair with personal care here on The Source. Of course you do. Here is your 30-second news brief. A Senate panel is looking at how FEMA responded to this summer's hurricanes. The last site for disaster snap relief in Central Florida opened yesterday morning at the Florida Horse Park to help those still affected by Hurricane Irma with food assistance. And a bill creating the Tom Petty Memorial Highway along a one-mile stretch of Highway 441 in Gainesville will be taken up by Florida lawmakers during the legislative session that begins in January. And that is your news brief from The Source. Life South Community Blood Centers is an emergency need for all types of blood. Our community blood supply is at an emergency level. This means there is little, if any, blood on the shelves at Life South, and our hospital's blood supply is very low. 30 minutes of your time can literally save a life. Do something amazing today. Please donate blood. Call Life South toll free 888 795 2707 for more information or visit www.lifesouth.org and find a blood drive near you. Veterans Day in the U.S. is also known as Armistice Day in other parts of the world, and it honors the many military who have fought for freedom. It is also the anniversary of the signing of the armistice that ended World War I. Major hostilities formally ended at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918. The folks at The Voice of South Marion join you in remembering military past and present. Hi, this is JP from Pen Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall -wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Pen Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Pen Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. Be sure to tune in to hear about innovative financial strategies on the long-running program Prosper with Keith Singer. You will learn about intelligent ways to safely grow and preserve your wealth, create reliable income streams, and maximize your legacy. Tune in Saturday at 8.05 a.m. and again on Sunday at 10.05 a.m. Prosper with Keith Singer. Life South Community Blood Centers is an emergency need for all types of blood. Our community blood supply is at an emergency level. This means there is little, if any, blood on the shelves at